Some years ago, I went out to California to the Michael Ellis School for Dog Training, and I filmed a two-week class that had students in it on protection training. I came back with 50 hours of a very good video on protection training. This online course is different than a seminar though. In a seminar, we can have 10, 20 dogs at a seminar and it's made up of people bringing their dogs and getting their dogs work. So we never know what we're gonna get because we don't know what the issues are with the next dog that's got their name on the board for how many dogs are worked that day. This is a class. It starts from the very beginning where Michael talks about definitions that apply to protection work so that everybody's on the same page. And it progresses through everything you really need to know about training protection dogs. He spends a lot of time on lectures and then has demonstrations to show you examples of what he just got through talking about. So there's a lot of lecture here, and that's important because how much do you learn when you look at a seminar? I would think that people that go to seminars already know everything they feel they need to know in a class like this, but usually they don't. And it's one thing to take your dog to a decoy in a weekend seminar and have them be worked, but a lot of times you don't know the innuendos of what the decoy is doing when they're working your dog. This course is designed to teach you how to design a protection training program for specific dogs that have specific temperaments. You're gonna be able to go and look at somebody working your dog and know that they really know what they're talking about. Or you're gonna see somebody working your dog and you say, no, no, no. I don't want that to be done to my dog. And there's nothing wrong with that. But to be able to do that, you need to understand the information in this course. As I said, there's a lot of really good material here. You can go down in the, in the description for the course below and read the outline for what we've put in it. It's a generalized outline, but it's also a detailed outline. There's good information here. If you have an interest in, say, training personal protection dogs, training sport bite work dogs, uh, training law enforcement dogs to get a good foundation for it. Doesn't give you the end of training for training a law enforcement dog, but it'll certainly give you the foundation so you know how to get your dog started. All dogs, when they're gonna do protection work, as young dogs, they work up to a certain level at a, at a young age and at that point, the handler needs to make up their mind, okay, I'm gonna go into dog sport, or I'm gonna go into police work, or I'm gonna go into personal protection work. And there's a difference there in all of them, and that'll be covered in this class. So if you're looking to learn from a professional, from somebody that's one of the best in the country on training protection dogs, this is a class for you, and we really recommend it. I wish I would have had this, what, 40 years ago, more than that, 50 years ago, when I got interested and went to my first seminar in 1974 on Schutzen work down in <laughs> St. Louis. I went to those courses, I went to those seminars for a lot of years before I started to really get a feel for what was going on because the instructors of the decoys weren't that good at explaining what they were doing. A lot of them just work from instinct because they really have a feel for it, but they don't they aren't able to articulate what's going on and why it's going on. Michael can do that. So with no further ado, I would recommend reading the outline below, and then you'll know that this is something that you should have if you're interested in bite work. There's really not a good place to go where you get an inform information on why you do what you do when you do it in protection work, and why you do a certain thing with one dog and not another. There are lots of guys out there that are good helpers, good decoys, uh, good at doing protection work with dogs, but they frequently don't know the theory behind what they're doing or don't explain it to people. So I spent many, many years in dog clubs hopping around and had very few people ever explain anything to me, like why do you do this? And what you wind up doing is over the years you wind up copying what someone else is doing, trying it out on dogs. You, if you stay, stick with it long enough, you figure out, oh, this doesn't work so well with every dog, why do we do this? And so I wanted a course that basically talked about uh, the, 
mental states and emotional states of protection work, like what's going on in the dog's head when they're doing it. Helps people learn to read some of the external signs about what's going on with the dogs uh, in protection and aggression type work. And then um, some techniques for developing them. And then some commonly, uh, uh, some common techniques that are in play and why we use them with certain dogs. This is a biggie, right? And if you've been around, uh, uh, around any dog clubs or even around personal protection work, there are a lot of things that people just kind of do uh, by rote. Uh, so um, if, as a off the top of my head example, when in Schutzen circles, if you've been around many Schutzen clubs, um, everyone's having the dogs hold and carry the sleeves. They're kicking the sleeves back out to the helper after, the dog, after they've slipped the sleeve to the dog. And there's a purpose for all of this, and it's appropriate for a specific kind of dog and very inappropriate for another kind of dog. And I had to find this out over a long period of time uh, because nobody ever really explains that to you. If you go to, to a club, they'll say, okay, do this, do this, do this, and you get out there, you do it, and then boom, you're off the field. And you're like, well, okay, I guess that's what we do. And many helpers, you ask them, hey, why do you do that? And they say, well, that's because we do, right? <laughs> do what I say. <laughs> like, and there's no discussion of what's going on in the dogs. Um, I'm going to divide uh, some of the discussion into what I'll consider like practical protection, which I'll lumping in there, I'm going to talk about police protection and personal protection type work versus sport protection. So they weren't always separate things, but over the, the last well, 50 to 100 years, they've become separate things. So there are a whole host of protection sports that were originally designed as breed suitability tests, as selection processes for police type dogs, and they've become standardized and stylized, and they're now sports, like an Olympic sport. They're all graded on points, and people are developing techniques to make the dogs do protection uh, better, uh, aesthetically, to suit that sport. So we're gonna talk about all the main sports and the differences between them, um, and some of the techniques for doing bite work from sport to sport are radically different. And uh, if you were to go uh, to most ring sport clubs and train your dogs in protection the way most Schutzen helpers do, there would be a big disconnect. Um, but there is also a lot of crossover and overlap between those. Once you start to understand the technique, there's also a lot of overlap between them. And the reason that I'm, for the people that are not interested in sport, per se, um, but are interested in real protection, for want of a better term, police work, personal protection work, or just interested in dog aggression, the reason that I'm surveying the sport world so much is that's where the bulk of the innovation is happening. So the, real, the people that are really examining the minutia of protection work are people in the sport world. And it's the same thing in the obedience. Right? So when we get to, when we talk about obedience, almost all the innovation is happening in the competitive sport world. Because competition tends to breed and drive uh, uh, innovation. People try to get better, and once you start grading things on a certain level and you have a standardized test and there are points involved, then people try to say, well, we hit this level, how do I make the next level? How do I milk some extra points out of this? And that's where most of the good technique has come. And people have, the, where the people have broken down protection into its smallest pieces because they're more concerned with aesthetic things, I meaning what it looks like instead of just whether or not the dog bites or doesn't bite.